Section 8 of Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3, Section 8. Excerpts from the Confessions by Augustine of Hippo. The Godly Sorrow That Worketh Repentance from the Confessions. Such was the story of Ponticianus, but thou, O Lord, while he was speaking, didst turn me round towards myself, taking me from behind my back when I had placed myself unwilling to observe myself, and setting me before my face, that I might see how foul I was, how crooked and defiled, bespotted and ulcerous. And I beheld, and stood aghast, and whither to flee from myself I found not, and if I sought to turn mine eye from off myself, he went on with his relation, and thou didst again set me over against myself, and thrusted me before my eyes, that I might find out mine iniquity, and hate it. I had known it, but made as though I saw it not, winked at it, and forgot it. But now, the more ardently I loved those whose healthful affections I heard of, that they had resigned themselves wholly to thee to be cured, the more did I abhor myself when compared with them. For many of my years, some twelve, had now run out with me since my nineteenth, when upon the reading of Cicero's Hortensius I was stirred to an earnest love of wisdom and still I was deferring to reject mere earthly felicity, and to give myself to search out that, whereof not the finding only, but the very search, was to be preferred to the treasures and kingdoms of the world, though already found, and to the pleasures of the body, though spread around me at my will. But I, wretched, most wretched, in the very beginning of my early youth, had begged chastity of thee, and said, Give me chastity and continency, only not yet. For I feared, lest thou shouldest hear me soon, and soon cure me of the disease of concupiscence, which I wished to have satisfied, rather than extinguished. And I had wandered through crooked ways in a sacrilegious superstition, not indeed assured thereof, but as preferring it to the others, which I did not seek religiously, but opposed maliciously. But when a deep consideration had, from the secret bottom of my soul, drawn together, and heaped up all my misery in the sight of my heart, there arose a mighty storm, bringing a mighty shower of tears and that I might pour it forth wholly in its natural expressions, I rose from Melippius. Solitude was suggested to me as fitter for the business of weeping, and I retired so far that even his presence could not be a burden to me. Thus was it then with me, and he perceived something of it, or something I suppose he had spoken, wherein the tones of my voice appeared choked with weeping, and so had risen up. He then remained where we were sitting, most extremely astonished. I cast myself down, I know not how, under a fig-tree, giving full vent to my tears, and the floods of mine eyes gushed out an acceptable sacrifice to thee. And not indeed in these words, yet to this purpose spake I much unto thee, and thou, O Lord, how long, how long, Lord, wilt thou be angry, for ever? Remember not our former iniquities, for I felt that I was held by them. I sent up these sorrowful words, How long, how long, 
to-morrow and to-morrow why not now why is there not this hour an end to my uncleanness consolation from the confessions so was i speaking and weeping in the most bitter contrition of my heart when lo i heard from a neighboring house a voice as of boy or girl i could not tell which chanting and oft repeating take up and read take up and read instantly my countenance altered and i began to think most intently whether any were wont in any kind of play to sing such words nor could i remember ever to have heard the like so checking the torrent of my tears i arose interpreting it to be no other than a command from god to open the book and read the first chapter i should find eagerly then i returned to the place where alypius was sitting for there had i laid the volume of the epistles when i arose thence i seized opened and in silence read that section on which my eyes first fell not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envying but put ye on the lord jesus christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfil the lusts thereof no further would i read nor heeded i for instantly at the end of the sentence by a light as it were of serenity infused into my heart all the darkness of doubt vanished away then putting my finger between or some other mark i shut the volume and with a calmed countenance made it known to alypius and what was wrought in him which i know not he thus showed me he asked to see what i had read i showed him and he looked even farther than i had read and i knew not what followed this followed him that is weak in the faith receive ye which he applied to himself and disclosed to me and by this admonition was he strengthened and by a good resolution and purpose and most corresponding to his character wherein he did always far differ from me for the better without any turbulent delay he joined me thence we go to my mother we tell her she rejoiceth we relate in order how it took place she leapeth for joy and triumpheth and blesseth thee who art able to do above all that we ask or think for she perceived that thou hadst given her more for me than she was wont to beg by her pitiful and most sorrowful groanings End of section 8. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio.